preparing to use the machine on a ventilator, on a ventilated patient. This is set. We've turned the machine on and completed an SST. This is the main startup screen you'll see at the top. It will tell us the last SST, which was uh, just today. And then below, these are the previous ventilator settings. If we're going back on the same patient, we would touch the top box, same patient. Or if we are doing a new patient, we will press the second box, which says new. So let's touch that. And you'll notice it gives us ideal body weight. Remember your formula, uh, 5 foot for men is equal to 105 in uh, pounds plus 6 pounds for every inch over 5 foot. In females it's 105 pounds for every inch over 5 foot. So let's say our patient is ideal body weight 150, we touch that and we go to the rotation knob and we turn the knob until it says either 150 just below or the ideal body weight in kilograms is 70 kilos. We have the body weight that we want, we press continue and now we can select the type of mode that we want. We have assist control, SIMV, spontaneous, or bi-level. Let's go and set this in SIMV. Next we can have volume control SIMV or pressure control SIMV. We'll use volume control SIMV because that's most typical. We can have pressure support or tubing compliance uh, which is a slight level of pressure support to take away the tubing resistance. And then we can go and have no pressure support. We'll leave it in pressure support. Now the triggering level is either flow triggering or pressure triggering. And we'll go with pressure triggering because that's more typical. Then we press continue. Note the patient is not being ventilated. The machine is still in standby mode. This is not connected to the ventilator, uh, to the patient at all. So we can go in and check our order, determine what we want to give the patient. Set the SIMV rate. We'll set it at 14. The volume we want for 50. And the flow we want a medium flow of 40. Pressure support will go with none at this time. Pressure sensitivity, negative 2 is most typical. Uh, FiO2 will uh, start with 80 percent. Going back here, this is the uh, rise time percent. We'll just leave it at 50 percent right now. Uh, TPL is uh, plateau time, we'll leave that at zero. Square wave or ramp, we'll stay with square wave. And the uh, exploratory sensitivity, that's the sensitivity to, to start of exhalation. Uh, we'll leave that where it's at. Peep, we want a five of peep. Rotate that. And then the uh, nice option on this machine is we can set our peak pressure alarm, our high pressure alarm before we set the patient. To ensure we don't over pressure patients, it will automatically set it at 40. We can adjust that up or down from that level depending on the condition of the patient. We'll leave it at 40. Now, we have all the settings. We can actually adjust a few other things, but then we press accept and the ventilator now is in a mode ready for patient use. And it is giving us a waiting for patient connection. Note, nothing is happening. The ventilator is not ventilating. It's just in a standby mode. This is ideal for when you have a patient 
that uh, is coming back from surgery. So, our uh, patient arrives. I will uh, move my test lung so that we can see it. And then we have here, we're going to connect the ventilator to my test lung. And soon as the ventilator is connected to the test lung, it will start ventilating. And so, the ventilator will start breathing for the patient, sensing that it is connected to the patient. Now, we're not completed with the setup yet. We need to go in to uh, the alarm modes. And it's best to let the machine cycle for a little bit. Going to adjust the uh, FiO2. We're getting an FiO2 alarm simply because we're not on oxygen. Okay. Now, let's set our alarms in the uh, bottom we have our alarm settings and note we have the actual setting to the left in the alarm limit so make sure that you set your alarms to set them the peak pressure is the first one typically we go 10 over peak and right now it's reading 15 so we'll set this at 25 and our next is frequency total and if the patient was breathing more than just the ventilator you would see this number higher and typically we set the uh, frequency at 10 over what the patient's breathing so it's at 14 and we are going to uh, set it at 24 now we have to set press the accept button and then we have V dot E total, that's X uh, minute ventilation, and it's reading 5.8, and we want that 2 to 4 above, so we'll set that at uh, about 8.5 as the high, and the low we'll set at, uh, oh, we'll go with 3, just uh, to make sure we have a nice range. VTE is exhale tidal volume, and that's typically 1 to 200 above and below, and so it's at 415. We'll set it at uh, about uh, 550, and the low we'll set at uh, about 200. So once we have those, we hit accept, and now our alarm limits are set, and that completes the majority of the setups. You can also set up your apneas, uh, apnea ranges. If you need that, you can go back and adjust the settings, the uh, modes, the volume control or pressure control, pressure support, and even easily switch over to uh, flow triggering. If you want to change any of the parameters, you simply touch on it, change it with the rotation knob, hit accept. From this point on, the patient should be doing uh, well enough to uh, continue ventilation without your presence. That's why you have the alarm limits to watch over the patient while you're not available. That completes the setup.